All right, I think we're live. What's going on, everyone? It's Stranger here. Welcome to my channel. Welcome, welcome. Shouts out to everyone in the chat. Shouts out to all the early birds tuned in right now. Thank you for tuning in. Once again, my name is Stranger. You're probably familiar with my face right now. Bye now. Going with a different look today. I just got a haircut the other day. And um, yeah, I'm just letting my hair out. Apologize if I don't seem on brand. Usually I have a hat on. That's usually the Stranger brand. But it's springtime. It's summer. I'm letting the hair out and let it, enjoying the air. So uh, hope you guys don't mind. Shout to out to Scorpion, big up, thanks for tuning in. Shouts out to the New York crew, USA crew, Dub Dimensions. What's going on, brother? Thank you. Let me know how the sound is, sound quality, levels, video, and all that. Want to make sure you guys can enjoy a smooth viewing experience for the next hour or so. Shouts out to Oscar Escobar, thanks for tuning in. Overture, what's up, man? Yes, yes. Mugs, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. That that one boy, yes. Good to see your name here again. DJ Fletchy, NKO Gliaz. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Once again, my name is Stranger. You're probably familiar with my name by now. What's up, Demore? Demore. So yeah, we are doing a special live stream today. And we have been doing, or I've been doing one or two of these recently where we do live streams with a more structured format that's the plan there is a plan to the show as opposed to just going free form and today we're going to be mastering tracks that i was sent by you guys and i'll be mastering everything within steinberg's wave lab pro so this is going to be interesting I've been doing a lot of research and learning how to master, especially with WaveLab, which is a an industry standard in terms of mastering. It's a mastering suite that comes with all the tools necessary to master a track. It also comes with auto or audio editing capabilities. A lot of top producers or engineers use WaveLab as their platform when they master music. One of the notable names for drum and bass is of course Break. If anyone's seen the Break masterclass on computer music where he masters a track, he uses WaveLab. And if you haven't seen that video, I encourage you guys to check it out. It's a very informative video and Break is definitely a mastermind in the studio. He gives away some deep secrets in the mastering process and you can find that on computer music there's it's actually two parts the first part is free the second one you have to pay you have to uh, order their the, the back catalog of that specific magazine so every uh, ish, issue of the printed version of computer magazine comes with digital files including digital videos so they did this um, interview with break where he breaks the <laughs> Sorry for the pun, where he breaks down his process of mastering. Glad you guys love the shirt. It's a new prototype, a new jungle shirt. It will be available on my online shop soon. I'm just testing out the suppliers right now, and I just got this in the mail the other day as a prototype just to see how it looks, and I'm liking the, the look of this one. I actually have two different designs. One has more of neon green, but I'm thinking I'm going to go with this this kind of color, it's more, has the more junglist vibe. You guys let me know. Um, so yeah, big up Energist, Zone 6666, Callum, Jillies, Noise 88, Zombie, Thunderdome. Thank you for tuning in. And yeah, so for the next hour or so, I'm going to be mastering tracks by you guys with wave lab we'll see how far we can go it's it does take time to master a track so we could be just limited to one track i might have a sprint run at the end where i try to master as much as i can but i, I just want to focus on one first so we can get down to the processes and techniques on mastering a track i don't want to rush through the first run because i want you guys to actually learn something and pick something up from my process 
So yeah, once again, Wave Lab is a mastering suite from Steinberg. If you're interested in picking it up, uh, they have two different suites. The Pro is a little more expensive at $757, but they have a more affordable tier, which is Wave Lab Elements at $150. And I believe uh, Elements has the necessary tools to master as well, including their Master Rig plugin, which I'll show you momentarily. Just make sure you read the descriptions to make sure. You can also drop them an email. Uh, I, I was trying to look for comparisons. Uh, I, I think it comes with Master Rig, which is the essential plugin to do mastering here. But I would recommend you make sure. Um, but yeah, this is WaveLab Pro. Let me know in the comments if you guys have had any experience with WaveLab and how did you find it? Glad you guys love the hair as well. And throughout this process today, I'm going to leave Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, just hold it until the end of the session because I want to be able to focus on the content first. So I'll let you know when we do some Q&A. Shouts out to Jose Platero, my good friend, old friend. Love, love seeing friends in the live chat. How are you doing? Felix K, what's going on? And so unfortunately, I'm not accepting more tracks to master. Maybe I will. I may open it up again later. So just stay connected to my social media. I'll post it up if I'm accepting new tracks to master. But I did get a bunch. So I'll do my best to select the best <clears throat> of the bunch to master today. Uh, so yeah, we got 40 people in the live chat. That's awesome. And without further ado, let's jump right into wave labs so here we are this is the main interface of wave lab so i'm just going to walk you through the different um i guess sections of wave lab and get you guys accustomed to this platform before we actually start mastering <laughs> So yeah, once again, this is the main platform of WaveLab. Now there's two ways of working in WaveLab. You can open up an audio file directly. If you open up this section, you can choose audio file and then that would open up a wave, right? So I'm just gonna go into my, my mastering files. Here it is. Okay, and if you if you hold down control and use your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out, so that's handy. Now this is working directly in their audio editor. Now I actually like to work in a, another another way, which is if you click on open again, instead of opening an audio file, open an audio montage. Okay. And you just can just start a new montage file. Oh. Just make sure you click new, of course. And it's just a, just use the defaults, which is stereo 44 kilohertz, which is the standard for mastering audio down to streaming quality or CD quality if you were from that generation. So this is the audio montage section. So from here, you can drag, file, insert audio files in here. So I'll just uh, pop this in right in like here. So the benefit of this method is you can right click, a, you can add a reference track. So mastering, having a reference is very important. So meaning a track that you like that's already mastered that you can use as a goal to get your track to sound as close to as possible, right? If you don't have a, a reference point, it's kind of hard to have to, it's kind of like you're kind of, you don't have, how do you say it? Uh, you have something to aim for when you have a reference track, right? I'm just gonna fix my camera here. So 
it's important to have a reference track. Uh, most, I think most engineers have a re use a variety of reference tracks depending on the genre and style. They'll, they'll have a different, re different reference track uh, depending on what they're mastering, right? So I'm just gonna pop in a reference here. I'll just use something that was mastered for me recently. You could also just drag from Windows Explorer. So I'll just look for one of my masters from Bob Mack, which is uh, my main mastering engineer. Shouts out to Bob Mack. If you're ever looking for mastering, check him out, Subvert Mastering. Always like to big up my buddies. Bob Mack is one of the guys that uh, one of the main mastering guys in drum and bass and you can check him out at scmastering.com Anyways, I'm gonna just pull in a track that he's mastered for me here um, I'll just pull in let's see It's a good track we can use as a reference um, Maybe this one So this little ear icon on the bottom left, if you turn it on, it flips and turns the reference on, right? So you can flip back and forth. And neat thing I learned, or very critical thing I learned recently, if you hit spacebar, which is the typical button to play, right? The spacebar is continuous, meaning it's continuous playback. If you stop it and you press spacebar again, it'll pick up where you left off. Whereas most of the time you want it to start at the same time every time you hit play. So use the enter key on your number pad to start at the, si at your, at the same spot every time. Okay. So that just shows you, you can uh, check the reference track simply by using the this icon here. Let me just walk you through some of the other parameters here before we get into the meat of mastering. We have tons of scopes here that can help you identify what is happening in your mix or master. So it's they're all found on the top window here. I'll just keep this track playing. So what you're seeing here is your loudness meter. So this is a recent uh, kind of standard that we use to measure loudness across streaming platforms. They call it loudness units. Um, typically, I, fi I find that the loudness of drum and bass tends to be, the value tends to be louder or greater than most other tracks in the music industry. So I found that mastering, I'll just play this track and play. So what you, you wanna do is no, look at these numbers on the right here of the loudness meter, right? So I means integrated lo loudness, which is the overall average loudness of the content that you're feeding this meter. And S is short-term loudness, and then momentarily is just even a shorter period of time. So what I typically focus on is the integrate, integrated loudness, which is the average loudness of your track. Now, if you're referencing between two tracks, then every time you switch between tracks, you're gonna have to right click and reset the meter. Otherwise, it's gonna take the average of both the tracks and then the value will be off. So just make sure you reset it every time you switch the uh, reference. Right? So drum and bass tends to be louder at around negative six lefts, 
sometimes negative seven lefts. I've even seen it up at negative five lefts. There actually was a really good uh, thought that was put out by my friend Bob Mack recently where, um, where the number is almost irrelevant because it almost depends on the track. Certain tracks just have more elements and will produce a louder overall signal, whereas some tr other tracks are more minimal with sparser elements. So you may get a lower loudness reading, but the overall impact still sounds loud enough. So when it comes down to it, you just have to listen and just feel it out and feel what is right for your track, right? Once again, I'm going to get to the questions at the end. So if anyone, if you guys can just um, save them until at the end. Unfortunately, I'm doing this all by myself today. No moderator. So I can't, can't, can't keep a, keep a tab of all the questions right now. So if you, if you don't mind, leave them at the end. And then I'll get to them uh, once I master a track or two. All right, so that's the loudness meter. The phase scope, I haven't really mastered. Again, another pun. <laughs> Today's a day of puns. I haven't mastered this scope yet. I believe what it does is it helps you understand what's happening, the phase between the left and right. Don't quote me on it. I uh, must admit, I didn't have time to learn this one yet. Uh, on here, you can switch to different meters. So the level meter, this is your typical peak level meter. So it shows that my peak is at negative 0.2 here, which is expected because it's a master track. And I believe the line in the middle is the RMS. Uh, the spectroscope is cool. It shows you how, what is happening in each um, almost frequency level. So from what I remember, the ball, the lower section is the lower frequencies. As you move up, it's higher frequencies. I tend to just look at the loudness meter. Some in the spectrometer. Spectrometer, you're probably familiar with this. It just shows your frequency from low frequencies to high frequencies. And you can customize this. You can right click on it, hit settings, and you can choose the color. So I chose that bright green for the peaks so I can identify it. Um, Yeah, you can also change it from uh, from a bar graph to a curve. So I have had a... So if you're familiar with that view, you could do it like that. But I, I, I like the bars because it allows me to just see immediately what is still happening. You can also use this. The spectroscope is similar. And then the wave scope is very very useful because it shows you what is actually happening to the waveform. So we can see if it's squashing the waveform, right? So that's, that's a useful tool. Now, those are the scopes available in WaveLab. Uh, some other things to talk about here. Inspector section, this is where you can add effects to individual tracks here. Sometimes you may, I may have multiple tracks in my audio montage. That's why they call it an audio montage. You can add multiple tracks. So 
especially if you're mastering for CDs, this is how you um, you construct the entire CD because then you can layer tracks together seamlessly. So let me just pull in another track for your demonstra oh, so to demonstrate. Yeah, so you can just pull this track in. So now you have multiple tracks in that you can master. For example, if you're mastering an EP, it's nice to have all four tracks on the montage because then you can compare them and make sure that they ha sound cohesive as a package, right? Who's the track by? The track, uh, the reference track is a track by me and David Lewis called Rose Wood. The Floating Points track is by Scott Sign. Shouts out to Scott Sign for the track. Big up Alejandro, Energist, LM. All right, so another section I look at is, well, there's the file browser. That's self-explanatory, metadata. Uh, clips is an important thing because then here, you can actually change the gain of, or the pre or post gain of your pre-master. Notice how this one is a lot quieter, right? So you might want both signals to be around the same level before you start mastering. Right, so you could, for example, take this one. Well, this is actually what I do. I'll pull in a, a, a VU meter. Just make sure. Um, so I use this one. This one's for free. It's TV Pro Audio MV meter. And we'll just play this track. So th this is where we get into what's called gain gain staging, right? Getting the levels of your input right before you start processing it. So I think we can bring this up. I want it to hit closer to negative two zero area. So go, we go into the clip section and just increase the pre-gain until we get enough juice. I think we can push up a little more. Bring it back one notch. Yeah, that's good. Let's tr get this one the same signal as well. This is where I'm going to have to use my ear because I'm pushing this up, but it's almost clipping and we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to bring this down. Maybe there's too much energy, so I can bring the other one down as well. I can set my reference level. There. Yeah, that's better. Now I can bring this one down. close which is all, all we need to be I just call this uh, YouTube mastering session all right uh, I'm gonna move this here all right so that's basically the platform 
of wave flaps. So I think we can get into to the mastering session now. So um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, step two, we're gonna get into adding some processing to the track. So we're gonna focus on mastering floating points by Scott Sign first. Okay, now there's two ways to go about this. You can actually, as I mentioned before, use this inspector section, and this allows you to add a different um, processing to each track. There's also the mastering section on the right here where you can add, for example, a global global processing, like a limiter or something, right? So what I can do is I can add a limiter here. Um, let's see, I'll use, just looking for, Wave Labs limiter. Here we go. So this is the limiter that comes with Wave Lab. It's simple to use. Just increase the input. I like to choose auto release. It just handles the release for you so you don't have to guess what it should be. So I just want to increase the input so the loud, well, we just can, we let's check the loudness, see how loud it is. Let's reset it. Again, we can use the wave scope to see what's happening with our waveform. I might bring it back down a couple. I don't want to squash it just yet. That's good enough for now. So we have our global effects on this master section here, and I just applied a limiter. If I was just mastering one track here, I would even just apply all the effects in this section because there's a really cool tool here called the Smart Bypass. And what this does is it analyzes the processed signal and then it adjusts the level so it matches the unprocessed signal. So that way you can switch between the process versus unprocessed and you can have an apples to apples comparison in terms of level. So that, you can, so that way you can see if your effect is actually benefiting the signal or is it taking away from it. Sometimes when something is just louder, like if you EQ something and you bring everything up, just the human ear is is deceived by loudness. It thinks that louder is better. So this helps resolve that issue because any change that you do to the process signal, such as boosting the EQ or anything, that final gain level will be we will that be matched to your original signal so that you can compare before and after and ask yourself, is this really improving my track after all um you know what i think we should try we should try doing it that way because i think this will benef be beneficial for you guys so i'm just going to pull the limiter down i'll pull the mvu meter down as well so yeah the first step is we're going to apply some eqing so steinberg has an awesome tool called master rig over here. So this tool, there's a number of different modules that you can add within this tool to help with your mastering process. The first one obviously is EQing. I 
there is a a, a more affordable version of Wave Lab. Just check the different tiers and see if it has what you need. Okay, so this is where I need my reference track to see um, how the levels are. Also, mind you, I'm mastering up my headphones and I'm not being able to use my speakers while I stream. So it's a bit harder to just master up my headphones. So you'll have to bear with me here. I'd like to see if I can find a reference that's a bit closer to our track here. So let me let me see if I can find something better. By the way, I am drinking water, <laughs> iced water with lemons today. If anyone is wondering, I find that a lot of YouTubers always announce what they're drinking. It seems to be a trend, so I'm joining the trend. But nothing special today, just water and lemons. Uh, I'm looking for a track that has a nice break that I could use as the master. Uh, maybe... Maybe this one, no, not that one. Maybe this one. Yeah, yeah that's a bit closer. And there's even an aim in there we can reference. All right, let's start playing with this. So the first thing I typically do is I would add a high shelf to kind of add some excitement on the high end. Now this track already has a lot of high, so I'm gonna be more gentle with it. What I first do is I bring it up to the extremes just to find the right point and then I bring it down. I just want that high end sizzle. Now I'm going to bring it back down. I'll even bring it down to the negatives and slowly bring it up until it sounds right. Sometimes I don't even look at the knob. It's helpful to just trust your ears and see where it goes. So you can just do it even by closing your eyes and increasing the gain uh, slowly, right? I'll try that. Funny enough, that sounds good to me, and that's actually at negative 2.4. So let's bring our um, our reference track back and see if we're totally off. No, that sounds right, actually. So maybe this track just has a bit too much highs. I'll just bring it up to maybe negative 2. We can always come back and adjust if we're incorrect with our assumption here. All right, the next is I'm gonna look at the midsection and look into bringing some more body in the snares. The frequency I'm looking for is around the 2000 to 3000 area, and I'll use a narrow cue to identify the frequency point. Here's a neat tool. This icon here solos the frequency band. So if you click on this icon up here, 
and when you move the knob, it'll isolate that frequency band. Sometimes that helps, it depends. Some people don't like doing it that way, but I like it. So yeah, I wanna isolate that frequency, bring out the snare again, bring it down and bring it back up. Now I'm gonna go for a wider range. I just want to find that range and then make it a wider movement. So I'm finding, oh, I'm, I'm having to go negative more than positive, which is interesting. I'll, I'll just keep going with it. I got to trust my ears with this one. So let's go further down. I like to work around the thousand, uh, range, 1000 to 2000 range that has a more mid body of the track, the synths, the pads, the mid basses tend to fall between that range. So let's uh, let's dial in a knob here. Now she just ranged the thousand to two thousand range. Also adds body to the break. Notice how the break sounds a little more thicker in this section. I tend to dip in this range, but for some reason it sounds better with that body. I'm finding that, that there was a range here I missed around the 1800 area. Let's visit that area. Small movements. I gotta say, Scott Skine, you did a good job mixing down this track. All the movements have been pretty gentle so far. Okay, the, now we're looking at the lower mids. This tends to be the range where the body of the mid bass sits. So those mid-range harmonics of the bass tends to sit around this area, around two to eight hundred. I'm gonna boost the kick, make it a punch a little. So the kick tends to sit around 150, 180. It's around two, two dB. What uh, a simple trick we like to do, or that's done in the industry, is once you find your setting. I find so I sat at neg or at positive two point six. Once you find that same setting, bring it down a little bit. That's the technique. Okay, finally we're gonna add some low end body, and actually I should have done this with another knob because number one has a 
uh, low shelf. Um. Okay, so what I'm going to do is switch this guy. Let's see, I haven't used this one yet, so I'll bring this to one, the same position. And about 3.5 of a Q and 2 dB. And this one, I'll bring it back down. This one I'm going to use as a low shelf and boost the low end. So sub bass is definitely an area that's challenging to master. So I'm going to need my reference. This is when you might want to use your spectroscope or spectrometer and see where those frequencies are hitting because the bass is hard to distinguish. Now I might need to change the, the minimum level of my meter here so I can see the act because it, I'm, I want to dial in and see what's happening up there at that level. So I just you just go to settings and change the minimum minimum level to let's say twenty four, right? So then we can see what's happening. Oh, it's not changing for some reason. Maybe twenty four is too high. We'll go forty. Would that work? <laughs> So those sub frequencies sit at, for this reference track, sit around a 60 hertz area. You see this line here. And also there's a lower note that go, comes down to around 40 hertz. And it's hitting around negative seven dB. So I'm gonna try to get the bass to sit around the same level here. Now, mind you, oh, the mat, the loudness is a bit different here. So we're gonna have to bring the loudness of my reference down. So it's apples to apples. So that's important. So I'm hitting around negative nine here. Let's just bring the master to the same level. I think that's around the same level. Yeah, it's close. So now we can go back to the meter. Let's check out what's happening with the bass. Okay, so it's a bit further down. So we're gonna have to change the minimum level again so we can identify what's happening. So those low frequencies is heading around negative nine, nine or negative ten. So we'll try to get our track around the same. So I'm pushing those, uh, the low shelf around 1.5 dB. All 
right, so that's the EQing. Okay, so I'm gonna. You can add an additional module here. You can add a sec. There's each each sec, each module. Well, most of them has two, so you can add a second EQ. And this EQ, I can uh, do a low cut, so I can remove all those unnecessary frequencies below like 20, 25 hertz, right? Like similarly, we can do the same thing with the high frequencies, do a high cut around 20 hertz, 20K. Shouts out to the live chat here. I see a lot of good conversation here. I like that we have a community here where we help each other out. It's not just about me helping you guys. We all have information that we can share in this. There's actually, actually stuff that I've learned from you guys just from reading your comments. So definitely encourage that. Definitely encourage this supportive community. Keep it up. Thank you, Scorpion, for sharing the info. Um, but yeah, awesome stuff. Keep it up, guys. All right, so that is the EQ section. So we're going to move on to the ne next section. All right, multiband dynamics. Okay, so this is where we control the dynamic range of specific areas of our track. Okay, now uh, we can pull this guy in. So here's, so it has four bands. So the compressor comes with four bands automatically. If you want to use it as a typical compressor, there's this minus button, which removes the bands on the top left here. So if you want to just have one band, like a normal compressor, just hit that minus button. Otherwise, we can use multi-band compression, which is a t the, typically the next step I do in my pr process. Essentially what multi-band compression is or multi-band dynamics is you're controlling the dynamics or the highs and lows of specific frequency ranges. For example, you might want the sub bass to always hit at a constant um, loudness or energy, right? So you want to control the bottom end with a multiband compressor. So the first band is the low band. We can solo it. Typical ratio I go for is around two. Sometimes we can go as high as four. What you want to do is set the threshold and look at this meter here. You'll see this number here. This shows the gain reduction, which means the amount of gain that it is, well, reducing to compress that signal, right? So I go for around, depending on the sound, around two dB of gain reduction. You have to reset, you click this to reset it if it's gone down too far. So for the attack, I tend to make it a slow attack, such as 65 or 70 milliseconds. It just allows those kicks to hit and have a transient. I don't want to squash those transients. So I allow 70, around 70 milliseconds to allow that kick. You can go down to even 40 or 50, depending on the kick.
I tend to have a fast release around 100 milliseconds. And for the other ranges, I don't typically play with the other ranges. Some mastering engineers do. I just haven't ma fully mastered uh, the entire art of multiband dynamics yet. So I don't go too crazy with the other bands. If anything, you can adjust the threshold so it uh, controls the peaks a little. So you may bring the threshold down to get around maybe half to one db of gain reduction And you want the attacks to be slower so it doesn't crush those transients. So bring it up to 40 to 70 milliseconds. Now here, here's the fun part. And I... Well, actually, I got to fix these bands here. <laughs> uh, this should be closer to 100. This should be 100 to, let's say, around 600 for the box frequencies. So I forgot who I learned this from. It's from another YouTuber. He does mastering for other styles of music, but this is the fun part where you can adjust the gains of each band. And he does it, that method I talked about where you just close your eyes and find what sounds right. I'll just look away. I found myself at 2 dB, so I bring it down a bit, maybe 1.4. So I'm about there. So let's bring that smart bypass uh, tool that I was speaking about. So we can now just listen to the before and after. So the way this works is listen to the process signal. Make sure this section is checked off and just click on the update gain. You can cl keep clicking on it as the track progresses just to make sure you have a good level. Notice now it brought the level down. Now we can check it against the original. All right, so just pay, just focus here. I, I'm not going to speak and interrupt your listening. Just make sure you see that I'm switching from original to processed, okay?
So it sounds like there is, it sounds more balanced. Uh, there's a little more weight. Uh, I find maybe ours, the highs could be boosted a little more. I think maybe we did tuck the highs a bit too much so we can go back into the EQ and maybe bring this up a little. Now, because it brings a level down, you're going to have to crank your system. Just be careful. Uh, just crank it, check it, but bring it level back down. Because once I get out of Smart Bypass, it's going to be loud again. I don't want to blow up your speakers, so just be careful. We all have a strategy that we come up with. A strategy to make things All right, so I'm gonna bring the level back up. So turn your speakers down. I'll give you two seconds. One, two. Okay, so it sounds like there's more body uh, with the processing. You guys let me know how that sounds. Uh, again, I'm doing it through my headphones, so it's hard to tell. But I think uh, there is more body the high frequencies, I think, could have a little more excitement, but there's a way to uh, improve that in the next stage. All right. Um, so, yeah, that was multiband dynamics. So on to the next section. Which is adding saturation and stereo depth. Okay. So that here is how we can get the highs a little more exciting as we can click and add a saturator and what's cool about wave lab saturator it's actually a multi-band saturator so we can isolate those crispy frequencies i'd say around 6000 to and up up isolate it right and there's two modes there's tape and tube mode Just test out, see which one sounds better to you. I find tape has more of those fuzzy, nice harmonics. So I'm going to use tape. And then you can choose the dry, wet mix on this with this parameter here. Yeah, those highs are sending nice and fizzly now. Let's maybe add some saturation to the mids. You notice the mix is just a little. For the highs, I'm only adding 35% of that wet signal. And for the mids, around 15 is probably enough. Otherwise, it's going to start sounding squashed. I'm not going to saturate the lower frequencies. I just wanted some enhancements on the top end. Yeah, 
Please. Let's go back to our smart bypass and analyze this. So I'm thinking it sounds pretty good. Uh, it sounds a bit hot, so I might bring down some of the those uh, saturation on the top end. Uh, the biology of human social That's much better. All right. <clears throat> now we can add another module for imaging, which increases the wideness of your track. So again, it's a multiband processor, so we can focus on the high frequencies first. Add a little more wideness to high frequencies. And then the mids. For the mids, I'm going to be gentler because that's where the snares hit. I want those closer to the center. So I might just add like 10% of wideness. And then for the low end bass, I actually want that to be so to be mono so everything let's say even 200 hertz and down we can bring that to zero so it's right in the center All right, that's sounding good. Let's check out what's happening with our waveform. Notice we did have to bring the highs down because checking our reference, now we know that there is a lot more highs on this track. But this track calls for a more crisper sound anyways, which is why we keep some of those highs. But we did tame it a bit so that there's a little more control. Finally, um, we're going to add one more level of limiting to add that nice extra loudness to the track. Now, I'm just going to use... Uh, here, I'll just use one of, uh, you can use additional plugins, so you can choose, I'm going to use, where is it? Here. To finish it off, I'm going to use Ozone's Maximizer here. So now the loudness is about that 7.5 loudness. So now we can bring our reference track back to 0 dBs for an apples to apples comparison. The strategy to make things be super old. Notice our reference track gets pretty loud. It come, got, gets up to even negative 5.8 at cer certain points. But once again, as I mentioned, and as Bob Mack says, big up Bob Mack, you got to really just judge it 
each track by track, right? Every track is different. Oh, one thing I didn't do is one final layer of compression to control the peaks. So I'll add one more compressor here. This one will just be a single band compressor. And this is just to control those very high peaks of the track. Again, you want a slower attack around 70 milliseconds, quick release around 100. And just adjust the threshold so you get around one to two dB of gain reduction. With this level of compression, um, I don't actually make it so that you hear anything. It's more just controlling the peak. All right, on to the next step. Okay, loud loudness so we already talked about loudness so i tend to have two layers of limiting uh, i have one to get the basic loudness and then you use another one for some additional loudness i think that loudness is pretty good for this track i don't think i would crush it any further because then then it's going to sound too squashed Okay, that's looking good. Let's check the wave scope one more time. Alright, waveform is looking nice. So I'd say that's uh, that would be our master. We can do smart bypass one more time to just check what's happening before and after. All right, so sounding good. So once you're uh, done with the mastering stage, then you can export the track. Now I like to add a final section here. This is called Mbit Dithering. So this is a finishing plugin. You can use, um, let's see, I believe um, you can use Steinberg's internal one as well. This just helps when you export the track because you're working at uh, typically pre-masters, we accept them at 24-bit audio. When you bring it back down to 16, um, it does all this math to bring it down to that bit depth. And we, you just wanna, I guess what, it, it smooths out the rendering to make sure you don't get any weird artifacts. So 
it's important to add a dither section. This just smooths out the rendering. And we'll just leave that at default. And once you're ready, just on the audio montage section, hit render. And you may want to, now you can select the range that you want to export. You may want to add a, sometimes there might be noise or, or a, or there could be a tail of sound at the end and you might want to fade it out so you can use this and just fade it out and then just select your waveform or just or just uh, click on your waveform oh. like that so we've selected this track and then I'm going to put it in a master folder. Now you can have naming presets if you click on this. So typically when I master file, I add an attribute. I'll just remove this. You can add, for example, I want it to say 44, 16 master, meaning 44 kilohertz, 16 bit, right? So every time you save a file, it adds that suffix to the file name. And once you're ready, just hit render. And once it's finished, you can open up in the audio editor. So just click on the file menu, click open audio file. And we'll go look for our folder. I don't remember where I saved it. This should be tricky. Uh, let's see. Where did I save it? So, oh, right, YouTube Master. I want to open, I'm getting uh, confused here. Open audio file, yes. And yeah, here it is. So now we can just inspect the waveform, make sure everything's cool. Looking like a nice sausage here. Uh, you may want to remove some silence here. So you can just click on this, delete. Now, when you play it in the audio editor, just be careful because it's going to send it to this master section and then it's going to process it again. So what you can do is just turn off the master section while you're previewing it. Sounds like a nice master to me. You guys let me know. Let me know how you guys, how it sounds to you guys. Well, I think it sounds pretty good. So that, that was mastering about, so we did this about in an hour and 10 minutes or so. So typically that's how long it takes. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it takes me a couple. So I'll do a first master, then I'll come back to the next day and make tweaks because um, you want, sometimes you may lose objectivity. You may have to step away from the track and come back with fresh ears to make sure that, uh, that you're not uh, off, totally off, right? So yeah, uh, that was mastering um, mastering that track. Uh, now, let me see. Am I missing any other points? Uh, okay, so we did, we did just walk through the audio editor. So this is the audio editor. And uh, lots of cool functions here if you need to uh, cor like correct or fix certain audio files you can actually use it to do that as well there's time stretching pitch shifting resampling pitch bedding all that good stuff there's some corrective functions as well so pretty uh standard for audio all your 
audio editing tools can be found here. All right, I had this section for a mastering challenge. I'll see how much we can get done here, but pretty much what I was gonna do was sprint through and see if we can get a master done in record time. Um, let's see how we do. Uh, so this, I'm gonna do it a completely different way. I'm gonna turn off master rig and I'll do it in the clip view this time. Since, because uh, when you're doing multiple tracks, it's better to use clip view and add it here because now effects are independent on each track, right? So we can add master rig once again. So this is a sprint. Let's try to get this done as quick as we can. Uh, I'll time myself right now and see how long it takes. All right, starting now, okay. Rip gets looser. I've been faced with enough that rip gets looser. Yeah, we'll put the work in. In effect, about to bridge the gap and cross over the disconnect. Yeah, we'll put the work in, then we put it in effect. Yeah, we put it in effect. About to bridge the gap and cross over Yeah, we'll put the work in, then we put it in effect. About to bridge the gap and cross over the disconnect. Too cold for the freezer, yeah, we keep it fresh. Fresh these shots lying up. I need rest. No luck with the game, better try. Yeah, we'll put the work in, then we put it in effect. About to bridge the gap and cross over the disconnect. Too cold for the freezer, yeah, we keep it fresh. Yeah, we'll put the work in, then we put it in effect. About to bridge the gap and cross over the disconnect. Too cold for the freezer. Yeah, we'll put the work in, then we put it in effect. About to bridge the gap and cross over the disconnect. Too cold for the freezer. Yeah, we keep it fresh. Now, there's enough bass in this track, and actually, there's certain sections where the bass is phasing. So I'm not going to add additional bass, but I'm going to add a. Well, let's just get rid of those low frequencies first, super low and super highs, using my cuts, all right. Yep, yep. And then we're gonna use multiband compression to control those low frequencies. You see there's phasing.
chased in the silhouette You think the dead's gonna listen what the killer said Rubble, but that's what we got to struggle Till the grip gets looser I've been faced with enough that now I'm looking out From all the storms that are coming I see a looming cloud Rain gathered is looking like it will bottle down Wash away all the dregs that are still around Just a shadow figure chased in the silhouette You think the dead's gonna listen what the killer said I'm all caught in the middle, I'm about to intercept Everybody's still relating to the disconnect Still will keep on being led by this misdirection You can die for answers or remain a living question Raising the level we put it in effect Yep, yep So you can preview before and after with this button here if you're using Master Rig. This button here. All right, so that hit five minute mark. Did my master in five minutes. I wonder how quality is, but uh, that was the challenge. So I'm going to save this, uh, render it. All right, so pretty much got through two masters. I think that's the most I can do within today's show. You can only do so much. And actually, you shouldn't be mastering too many within one session because you get ear fatigue and you lose objectivity. So it's recommended that you do one or two tracks per session and then take a break and come back to it with fresh ears. So... We're going to open up to some Q&A. So I, I, I noticed there were some questions about loudness before. If you guys want to shoot your questions now, we'll take the next 15 minutes to answer them. What's going on, Belly Man? Thanks for tuning in. See lots of people in the live chat. Awesome. Yes, I use open back headphones because, uh, yes, you get less ear fatigue because it, it sounds more like, it sounds more natural as if you're listening to speakers. So if you're doing mastering and mixing, the open back DT990 by Bayer Dynamics are great. That's their, the sister to the 770s, which is closed back and which is good for recording a microphone because then there's no bleed. So I, I've been loving these, the 990s. They find sound very clear, very precise. Um, do I master for digital services separately? I do not because, um, well, pretty much every, all my music is through digital. So um, it's all, I just do one master and send it out to my distributor. I noticed there was a question, what about Spotify and how do you master for loudness for Spotify? Well, Spotify, when you upload their tr tracks to their platform, they have an algorithm that looks at the loudness of your track and then brings it down to their, I guess, industry average so that every sa everything on their platform sounds the same in terms of loudness. So... I'm not. Re I don't really take consideration to Spotify's levels. I just get it to the optimum level that I want it, and then I just depend, rely on Spotify adjusting it after. Um, there could be other ways doing this. There could be better ways, but that's just how I do it. Again, I am just learning. I just picked up mastering earlier this year, and there's definitely lots more to learn in this art form. So. I can't say I know it all. Let's see, what other questions do we have here? Big up, Scorpion. Thank you for tuning in. Do I have a preamp for those headphones? No, because I'm using the RME Babyface Pro as my audio card, and there's already a preamp supplying enough juice to my headphones. So... I don't need a uh, preamp for these. Depends on your your sound card if it has additional juice. Do I mat? Yeah, I answered that question already. Uh, is it a linear phase EQ the on Master Rig? There is a linear phase um, 
uh, uh, button, you can click on this button here and it enables linear phase. Okay. I'm still learning what linear phase does. So if you guys know, let me know. I heard it gives you a cleaner signal. Okay, what other questions do we have? Checking through, I'll just play the track in the background while I read for questions. What the killer said, I'm middle, I'm about to intercept. Everybody's still related to the disconnect. Still we keep on being led by this misdirection. You can die for answers or remain a living question. Raising the level, we put it in effect. Step, step, put it in effect. So I have multiple compressed uh, limiters. So Scorpion asked if you use ozone maximizer instead of Pro L2. Uh, I have all of them. Well, most of them. And it depends on the track. Again, this is something that Brake advises. It depends on the track, which limiter he pulls out. So some tracks he pulls out L, the, uh, Pro, Pro L2 because uh, it does something to... It's, I heard it's uh, more gentler on transients, possibly. So, really depends on the track. Yep. When you're exporting a track from Ableton, uh, just make sure it's 24-bit audio. Standard is 24-bit with 44 kilohertz. 24-bit just allows you more headroom so that it doesn't clip when you boost up the levels. What we get used to struggle till the grip gets looser. I wouldn't normalize the file. Ableton does that because that... Yeah, I just wouldn't normalize because you want... It's better to have headroom. K9, thanks for your question. What 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 do you mean submit track? Submit track for what? It's hard to see say who are my top three drum bass producers. There's so many right now that are doing great stuff. I'm terrible with names, so when you put me on the spot, it's hard to think. I'm really feeling Boo's stuff. He's a great producer. I love his bass sounds. Just a shadow figure chasing a silhouette. I think the dead's good. My friend Tier Kahoot recently put me onto Boon Shen. He makes some great sound design, great bass sounds. Yep. I like break stuff. Really love his sound design, his his drums. His bass sounds. Yeah, Ozo 9 is good too. If Use what you have. Today's video is centered around WaveLab, Steinberg's WaveLab, but that's not to say you can't use any other software. It's up if you have to t use whatever tools you have at your disposal. Big up Dub Dimensions for tuning in. Awesome to see you here. All right, I'm going to close up this show momentarily. Let's just check out our tra tracks and then we'll close off.
So yeah, that was Scott Sign's Floating Point. That was his track, the first track that I mastered. The second one was Initial Prospect and Young, Young Ghost. And th that track has put it in effect. So I'll try to leave their links in the description after I edit the video if you guys want to check it out. But those, thanks to you guys for sending in your pre-masters. How many lefts do your tracks have? Uh, tend to be around negative seven left sometimes negative six again depends on the track some tracks just have more sonic material and it just tends to be just uh higher in value in terms of luffs again use your ears don't just rely on the numbers otherwise you might just crush the signal could i repeat the steps for mastering so i started with one eqing number two was multiband dynamics and then number three was, uh, what was it? I think it was enhancement, so adding stereo depth and saturation. And then number four was compression. Number five was loudness, so li adding two layers of limiting. And then I rendered the file. Pretty basic steps. It doesn't have to be rocket science. Actually, one rule of thumb is in mastering, it's better if you keep it more basic if you're doing too much to it you may be destroying the track so we're more making small movements to enhance the track if you really need to like do all sorts of magic to a track then you may want to go back into the mix stage and resolve the mix as opposed to trying to fix it through the mastering stage mastering is just light eqing some dynamics and then loudness that's all it is so uh you don't really have to overthink it Although it is basic, it takes years of practice to get the ears to tune and understand how certain things should sound. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still learning to this day and it's a it's really fun art form. And if you're interested, I encourage you guys to try it out, explore it. So yeah, I just want to thank you everyone for tuning in today to my live stream on mastering. Thanks again to the kind people at Steinberg who uh, gifted me with a copy of Wave Lab so we can do this, um, this session together so I can show you mastering within Wave Lab. Once again, there's two tiers of Wave Lab available. There's the full suite, which is Wave Lab Pro, and then there's a more uh, lighter version called Wave Lab Elements. I believe Elements has the bare essentials which you need which y to use for mastering. Um, check on the website to make sure. Otherwise, I just want to thank you all and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Stay creative, stay safe, and we'll see you at the next show. Peace. <laughs>